member statements. Member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. This summer, I invite you and folks from across the province to come and visit Oshawa. This year, the Motor City Car Club is once again hosting our annual world-famous Auto Fest. This year is the 25th Auto Fest, and it will be held at Lakeview Park on Saturday, August 26th, and Sunday, August 27th. Every year, Auto Fest draws classic car fans and families from all over to check out entries from across Canada. Each year, we expect about 10,000 people come to experience Auto Fest. Classic car enthusiasts gather, enjoy, and celebrate Oshawa's rich automotive history and bright future. Lakeview Park is a fantastic space that becomes a sea of classic cars, new friends, and great music. There are over $5,000 in cash prizes, a 50-50 draw, and, Mr. Speaker, a draw for a classic car. Bring the kids to hang out in the kids' zone, make memories at one of the most amazing events I have ever been a part of. As I mentioned, the Motor City Car Club hosts this massive event. Our community appreciates the work they do with the help of all of the AutoFest sponsors. Funds raised support Grandview Children's Centre, and through the years, AutoFest has raised over $250,000 for Grandview kids. So again, I hope everyone comes to Oshawa this August for the weekend of the 26th and 27th to enjoy AutoFest at Lakeview Park. This year, we are celebrating 25 years of AutoFest, and we hope that all of you will join us. Nice. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. York Southwestern is known for its events. From our annual Santa Claus Parade, now in its 39th year, our Western Farmers Market also in its 39th season, and our wonderful summer theater in Little Avenue Park. Western has high standards, and that is exactly what they did with their second Western Pasca Fest. What started out as one one-time event to celebrate Canada's 150th birthday was so well received that it has now become an annual event in Western. Pasca Fest is a free event and everyone is welcome. The event was well organized and a lot of fun. Large crowds were on hand along Western Road, north and south of Lawrence on last Saturday to watch an entertaining set of Pascas captive audiences. This was Western's second year Pasco Fest and by all account was a huge success. Crowd, crowds filled with corner of Western Lawrence to watch musicians, fire eaters, puppet show artists get to work and much more. Attendees in this year's event were amazed by a biff of incredible talented performers as the decadent sounds of band drums dance through their performers captivated outlookers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. Last weekend I had the pleasure of once again attending our Emancipation Gala. It's a fundraiser for the North American Black Historical Museum out in Amherstburg. We shared an honoring Phil Alexander with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Phil is a former associate dean for the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Windsor. He was one of the museum's founders back in 1975. The museum was established as a way to help young members of the black community remember their roots and learn the stories of their ancestors. Amherstburg was one of the first Canadian stops on the Underground Railroad. Phil Alexander has held every executive position on the museum's board of directors at one time or another. He's also volunteered to raise money at bingos, chaired several committees, and supported his community in many ways. Speaker, about 20 years ago, Phil Alexander worked on the Nazare Church Restoration Project, which helped the church get the designation as one of Canada's national historic sites. He served on the police commission in Windsor, He's been a member of the Employment Equity Advisory Committee for our Public Board of Education. He even served six years as a board trustee with the Ontario Science Centre. In his spare time, uh, Phil has been a volunteer with the Multicultural Council, Big Brothers, the Y, and I don't have enough time to list all of his community volunteer time speaker, but I know you will join me in saying, Phil, well done, well deserved, my friend. You set an example for all of us. Member Statements, the member Thunder Bay, Superior North. 
Thanks so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the recent announcement by Greyhound that they will be ending passenger bus service west of Sudbury on October 31st has shaken all of us in Northern Ontario. Many people in the Northwest, certainly, who rely on that service are looking for alternatives that can fill the void. Motor coach services are vital in our part of the province, and I believe that the government has a role to play in finding a solution to this rather grim situation. In the Northern Ontario Multimodal Transportation Strategy, one of the key elements is the provision of enhanced intercommunity bus services throughout the North, with the Ontario Northland Transportation Commission, or the ONTC, extending its services to northwestern Ontario, particularly to fill the gaps that cannot be met by private transportation companies. It's my hope, Mr. Speaker, that the Ministers of Northern Development of Mine and the Minister of Transportation will follow up on that strategy and ensure that the ONTC extends its motor coach services to the Northwest in order to fill the gap left when Greyhound causes its services or ceases its services at the end of October. While I am very pleased that uh, Casper Transportation in Thunder Bay intends to expand their passenger bus service in the Northwest, and our hat goes off to them. The truth is they simply cannot meet all the needs in our part of the province, and we need to fill that gap. Certainly by continuing to partner with the ONTC, these needs can be met, and I strongly call on both ministers to see that that happens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next statement, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I rise today to offer a statement of congratulations to residents in Ottawa Centre who are part of the movement in Ottawa, and I'm sure it's a movement shared across our great province. Um, there's a movement in Ottawa Centre to save the urban tree canopy. We know that a lot of people want to live downtown, uh, and we know that people support responsible development in the downtown. But as that happens, Speaker, we have to make sure that the beautification that exists all over our great cities and towns maintains itself. So what I'm proud to tell you is that Tom Dedman, who was a terrific volunteer and canvasser in the campaign of which I was privileged to be part, spearheaded an organizing drive in the course of five days, Speaker, gathered 800 signatures, hit over 400 doors, and managed to convince the developer in question, the City of Ottawa, and his councillor to take the right position and maintain a tree on his parents' property, that was, one of which was 156 years old, the other was 134 years old, managed to maintain those trees for the future. And that's, to me, Speaker, how change can really happen. It's community-driven change. It's people taking politics into their own hands. And I'm inspired to say that Tom, his father Richard, his mom Carol, were all part of our campaign. They gained the door knocking skills, the canvassing skills, and it's so honoring and, and appreciative for me to see that applied in practice to such an, such an astonishing result. So, Richard, Carol, Tom, well done. Member statements.